Well, a very good evening to you, and thank you very much indeed for joining us, um, either joining us live to watch this uh, latest webinar in our series, or uh, if you're watching at a later date, which of course is one of the great things about recorded uh, webinars, they're there forever as a resource for people to watch. And so this uh, event, this online discussion um, for D DBA members and beyond uh, is brought to us today uh, by our preferential insurance partners, Haven Knox Johnson. So without further ado, can I just say thank you to them? Thank you to the guests, which I'm going to leave Paul Knox Johnson to introduce. And Paul, thank you for sorting this out for us. And the floor is yours. Absolute pleasure, Mike. Thank you very much for that. Um, Welcome everybody to the Dutch Barge Association Varnishing Your Barge webinar brought to you with Marine Industrial and Epiphanes. I got it right that time. I've got it wrong every time. But Epiphanes is how it's pronounced, I'm told. A um, little bit, a few bits for housekeeping. The webinar is due to last about an hour. There'll be a presentation with a question and answer session at the end. But we will be accepting questions that are throughout the um, throughout the webinar so people can sort of ask about things that are relevant at the time and we can sort of move on to them. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll find a Q&A box. If you click that open and you want to ask a question, just type it in and we'll, we'll work our way through it. Um, so without further ado, oh, hang on, one more point, is the fact that this webinar is being recorded, as Mike just said, so uh, it'll be available for you all to sort of go back to and reference to later on. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Laurie and Ben from Marine and Industrial, who will uh, go through the presentation. Over to you guys. Good evening, good afternoon, or wherever Everybody. you may be. Uh, my name's Laurie Brebner. I'm uh, a, a Southern Area Manager from Marine and Industrial. My colleague, Ben Catchpole, uh, looks after the East Coast. Uh, between the two of us, we uh, look after technical sales for marine and industrial uh, in the UK, and we are the uh, Epiphanes distributor for the United Kingdom. So what are we going to discuss today? So um, we've been asked to put together a presentation, as we understand um, the vast majority are very, very keen on uh, learning a few more tips and hints on uh, varnishing. So all we'll do, we'll discuss who is Epiphanes, what they are as a company, their longevity, um, the different types of varnish, um, how to apply it, the best way to get the best results. And then um, if there's any technical support that you need, where to get hold of uh, technical data sheets or anything else like that um, moving forward. Um, as you can see, uh, Epiphanes has been around since 1902. Uh, so it's been around a long, long time, uh, and in such times, enormous uh, amount of uh, strides uh, and improvements have been made to the original products. But it was a, it's, it's a very much a Dutch product, and for those of you that know, um, the Dutch like their barges, and um, particularly some, um, uh, so there are some absolutely magnificent wooden vessels uh, over in Holland. And, um, and the, the quality uh, um, of the build and uh, the craftsmanship is unsurpassed. So as a result, Epiphanes got on board uh, with producing paints and varnishes. Um, and uh, what started as a sort of fairly small, uh, fairly small setup has, um, has grown over the years to a significant size. Uh, and they've just um, um, built Ben and I were over there in, in April and they've just added another addition um, to the factory, uh, which is already bursting at the seams, um, such as uh, such as the demand for the products globally. Um, so they have a you know an excellent reputation um, and their uh, their quality is um, is absolutely excellent. So there's a lot of lot of a uh, lot of history there. My Epiphanes, as I already alluded to, worldwide admired for paints and varnishes. The high quality is constant. They, they produce on site. They don't produce anywhere else. So they haven't got any subsidiary uh, companies producing for them. Um, and they also do some production for other companies uh, under, under, under own branding. Um, they have a full range of products, as we say, from single pack to two pack varnishes, uh, single pack. Uh, and two pack uh, high gloss top coats, but also satin finishes. Excellent service and backup. 
uh, they travel extensively um, throughout Europe, but also throughout the world attending most boat shows. Um, their shipping is excellent. I mean, we have found of late, uh, sort of since Brexit, that um, obviously we've had uh, one or two little hiccups uh, with, uh, with uh, receiving and getting goods, but uh, I must say, hand on heart, that Epiphanes have been absolutely exceptional. Their uh, expediators and what have you that they use, um, if they say it's gonna be with us in five days, it is and uh, we've never had any, um, had any problems. Um, and the other thing, all their products are made specifically for this market. So they've never really delved into any other market outside of marine. Um, you will see on future slides um, that the Epiphanes product is used on non-marine, some cars and bits and pieces like that. We've seen some absolutely wonderful um, varnish jobs on doors and, and the like, but it has been made specifically with the marine market in mind uh, and because the marine environment is harsh. So consequently, their, uh, their UV stability uh, and, uh, is, is absolutely top notch. And as a result of that, they, uh, you know, they, they really, really concentrated and understand the, the marine market and how harsh it can be. So first of all, we're gonna, we'll talk about varnish. So if we skip through to the next slide, there's a beautiful, that's the Epiphanes, uh, that's the Epiphanes uh, logo. So as you can see, looking from left to right, um, we have the Epiphanes clear varnish, uh, then we have a wood finish gloss. Then we have the, uh, the two pack Epiphanes PP. We'll, uh, we'll talk to this a little bit later. This is probably the best um, build up varnish out there without a shadow of a doubt, very, very hard fills the grain absolutely beautifully and dries nice and quickly too. Then you have the Epiphanes polyurethane, but the polyurethane of course is a two part. So you have a hardener or uh, an, a, a, like an activator that you add to the product uh, and then that becomes a chemical cure. And then you have the rap rapid clear over on the, on the right. That's uh, back to a single pack product. If I could just allude to the, and please I'm not meaning to teach anyone to suck eggs, um, the difference really between single pack and two pack is really down to the, the, the way that it dries. One will dry from the surface down and, and dries by grabbing moisture from the air. The two packs have a chemical hardener whereby it's an accelerated um, uh, hardening um, at, a, at a, a predetermined mix ratio. Um, and uh, they both have their uh, they both have their niches in the market as to where one might be uh, better than the other. Okay, right. Now, which varnish should be applied? The first questions we need to ask is what is the type of wood? Some woods are resinous, like teak, mahogany, those sort of hard woods. Uh, others are a little bit softer. Um, so the type of wood will have a bearing on what sort of uh, or which particular varnish will, uh, will, will stand up better. Is it a new system or is it maintenance? When we're saying a new system, are we talking virgin timber, bare timber? Or if it's maintenance, is it existing, existing varnish that has, has broken down, faded? Um, also, you've got to ask the amount of gloss. Now, generally on exterior varnish, we like a lot of gloss. We like the bling, we like the shine, and it looks absolutely wonderful. Um, down below, of course, we might not want as much uh, as much gloss level. We 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 might uh, want to, uh, you know in a locker, for example. Why would you why would you want high gloss? So there are satin finishes uh, which um, uh, are, are are used primarily uh, in interior uh, interior applications. Toughness and hardness, again depending upon the movement on the boat or the area of traffic. So if you were to think around a companion way on uh, companion way steps, handrails, something that's going to be, see an awful lot of movement and an awful lot of wear and tear, that would determine whether you decide to go for a single pack or a two pack. Generally, we think for the hardness, the two pack varnishes are the, um, are the one of choice primarily because they, um, they cure much, much quicker and they are, they, they, they harden off that much quicker. Um, the available time by that, please, this has been, um, this has been interpreted from, from, uh, from, from Dutch. Uh, the available time is, uh, what, what he means by that is cure time, uh, how quickly it goes off. 
and how many coats you might want to get in in a pre preset time. And as I said to you earlier, interior or exterior. So these are just questions that I dare say you may well have already. And in your mind, you have particular applications that you've got one or two questions about. So as we go through, um, hopefully they should be able to um, should be able to answer those. But please hit any of the Q and A boxes if you've got anything in particular. Um, please do. Um, you know, fire that in. So a good, a good system of varnish consists of the right number of coats. And by that, we mean sufficient dry film. Um, dry film, when you, add, when you apply a, a varnish, um, be that by roller or be that by, uh, by, by brush, um, you, are, you, will ex you will lay so many what we call WFT, which is a wet film thickness, uh, which will harden off as the, as the product dries, it will shrink back. Uh, to a DFT, a dry film thickness, which is, it, it, it means it's stopped its cure and it can't shrink back anymore. So, uh, you know, you would want the correct amount of coats in order to get the right amount of coverage and the right amount of protection. Yearly maintenance. Uh, yearly maintenance is going to mean that you're going to be keeping an eye on the varnish. Again, high movement areas, you'll see little chips and dings areas where it's moving. Uh, where it's wearing a little bit thin. Equally, if you're in a very, very warm uh, climate, uh, you know, the amount of UV degradation will very much be determined by the temperature and by the, uh, by the climate. Um, edges are done an additional time. By that, I think he means that um, edges are, uh, where we have a sharp edge, it's a, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult area to get a decent amount of coating. Um, no paint, no, no coating really adheres particularly well to sharp edges. So as a result, we would try and um, uh, try and get uh, uh, edges um, square, not square, but certainly slightly rounded. But where there are very, very sharp edges, you just have to allow additional additional drying time on those on those areas because it'll be just gonna put in just gonna put in quickly Laura, as well. Also on edges, it might pay to varnish a coat previous. Um, so you get a bit more thickness on an edge because it might be a high wear area on an edge as well. So just bear in mind that on the edges, um, just a bit more thickness of paint or maybe another couple of coats. Sorry, Laurie. No, no, that's great. No, please feel, feel, feel free to interject that. Um, don't varnish with moisty weather. That should be moist weather. Um, it's only because uh, it, where, where, there, where there is high moisture. And similarly, if it was a, um, if it was a, a, a high humidity, all it means is you've got moisture in the air, and what will happen is that as the um, as the as the varnish begins to cure, it could go a little bit milky. You will actually see a um, you will actually see a, a slight milkiness um, appear in the uh, in the varnish, which uh, is purely because the moisture has uh, has been trapped. Similarly, or in direct sunlight, direct sunlight is just going to mean that you've got um, uh, high UV straight away on the varnish. Uh, the ideal place is to do varnishing sort of indoors uh, or if, if it's outside with a good uh, amount of airflow uh, because what that does is that accelerates and helps the, the cure. Um, good and nice gentle airflow is absolutely, absolutely perfect. Right. Um, okay. So now we'll, so we'll start on the first is the Epiphanes clear varnish. So this is a single pack. It's traditional high gloss. Um, when we say it's traditional, it's uh, normally um, of an oil oil base, so uh, linseed tongue oil varnish. Um, this, the Epiphanes Clear, has an additional UV filter, so it's excellent, absolutely excellent for um, exterior. Very, very good for interior as well, um, but the extra UV filter just means that it will uh, withstand high UV. Um, but again, depending upon the number of coats. Um, can be used for a new system or an existing system, so it could go over existing uh, existing varnish if you so wish, provided the existing coat is um, uh, is prepared uh, correctly by way of abrasion, and we'll come on to that a little bit later. Um, this can also be applied directly onto single and two pack varnishes. It, it, the rule of thumb is is that. Um, Single pack varnish can go on to two pack, but you can't do it the other way around because two pack, because they have a chemical hardener, 
generally uh, in that hardening process, if you were to put it over a single pack, um, you would uh, you would start to melt the, uh, the the single pack varnish underneath, and it would then be unstable, and you could see crazing, uh, which doesn't look particularly pretty. How can you tell if your varnish is single pack or two pack? Your existing varnish. Uh, probably the easiest way, um, and I just say do this in a little tiny test panel, would be to get a rag with some uh, like gun wash or like a standard uh, thinner. Um, and I mean a, a solvent thinner, not something like uh, um, an oil like, um, uh, well, you know, uh, what am I thinking about? White spirit or something like that. But if you actually had a, 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 a thinner, and if you actually held that rag onto, the, the varnish or the single pack, if you think it's single pack, if it starts to pickle within a matter of minutes, then that's pretty much conclusive that you have a single pack. However, if it takes that a little bit longer, uh, I would say sort of around about 15, 10 to 15 minutes for it to start pickling, then you, that's a pretty safe bet that you have, um, you have two pack. So the system for Epiphane's clear varnish. Um, so we would, we're looking here at a minimum of four coats. Now, this would be looking at onto uh, a uh, uh, bare timber. So the first coat, and as you can see, if you look at the bottom, uh, you've got the thinner, which has got the Epiphanes brush thinner. Um, and you can see that it's 50%. So it's, you know, it, it, it's 50% it's thinners, 50% varnish. That would be your impregnating coat. That would be the first one that would wick into the timber and actually seal off any oils or anything that is uh, that is still existing in the timber. We would also say beforehand it needs a an abrasion, <clears throat> and we'd be looking at what would you say, Ben, uh, two twenty something like that. What in, or, in between in, coats? No, no, before the first coat. Uh, yeah, one eighty two forty. <clears throat> All that does is that opens up the grain and uh, allows room for the uh, for the for the varnish actually to wick in. Um, so you don't have to go, you know, particularly heavy with it, but um, sort of. No, it's, it's quite good with the percentage of thinners that penetrates into the timber, so it seals from the, from the inside out almost. And then after the, after the fourth coat, things go sort of neat almost. Yeah. So then the second step would be you would do 25% thinner. So that would be the next, that would be starting the first of the build up coats. And then the third coat, 15% thinners. And then the fourth, and uh, that, that coat would be maybe, well, nothing could be virgin, tim, uh, virgin um, uh, varnish or with about 5%. And then of course, you can continue to add coats onto that. But the more varnish you get on there, the, the higher the durability and, the, and uh, uh, and yeah, yeah. but then that depends very much how much time you've got um how dedicated you are <laughs> and uh, how big an area you're doing so um but we would say at least a minimum of four of four coats and always uh with the brush thinner as a um uh, as the thinner to 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 actually let it impregnate yeah so there was some consumer tests carried out um and this, this was done by, by Epiphanes. We weren't involved in this. And uh, uh, Epiphanes came out absolutely, certainly one of the, one of the betters uh, out there. And uh, the, the, the results for those people that have already used it um, speak for themselves. I mean, there's some excellent varnishes out there, don't get me wrong. Um, yeah. And Epiphanes is designed primate, well, absolutely for the marine industry. So it, they do understand how harsh the environment is. I think Epiphane's single pack UV extra varnish is probably the probably the biggest seller of single pack varnish in the leisure and the trade market, I I would say, personal I've seen. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of traditional boat builders just love it because um to, to cliche a, a, a saying, it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Um, gives uh, excellent protection. That, that lovely gloss has a lovely luster to it. Uh, yeah. it it's, it's just a lovely product. It's a yeah. traditional varnish. The proper, it's, you know, yeah. nothing in particular. 
the rubbed effect varnish. Now, what this is, is um, again, it's a single pack, but it has a satin. <clears throat> um, and I think it's dulled down to about 45%. So uh, it's a particularly good for um, interior finish. I'm really aimed at the interior finish, as I said to earlier, you know, maybe inside lockers, could even be um, on, uh, you could even have it on a, a chart table or something like that, where you might not want to be high glossy, uh, particularly if you were navigating at night and uh, you had lights, um, the last thing you want is glare off the table. So uh, a satin interior finish would be, uh, would perhaps be the preferred option. Um, but it's very hard and it's very, very durable. It has good elasticity. A lot of the single packs uh, generally are used more on, 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 on timber uh, because of their elasticity, because they don't cure as quickly as a two pack. Um, they're still through curing and they'll be through curing for weeks. Um, but they they will withstand movement, uh, and you you won't get that cracking that you might do on a on a on a two pack. Um, excellent scratch resistant. Again, this is due to its um, uh, due to its uh, it, its its toughness and durability. Um, and as I said, the interior finish on a high gloss build up. So you could uh, you could if you wanted uh, you could put this over the top of clear varnish or wood finish gloss if you yeah, wanted yeah. to dull it down. So, um, uh, if uh, yeah, yeah, actually, that's a little bit too shiny. Uh, you could just de nib with something like I don't know, 400 grit, and uh, and then just go over with a couple of coats of the rough effect varnish, uh, to, to just dull it down just that little bit. Yeah, uh, but just, just had a couple of, couple of questions come in. Um, so one, one of you was saying, um, how many coats for a, a mirror like finish? Um, so after you generally probably see full grain fill after probably the third or fourth coat, but then it would still be lovely and glossy and high gloss, but to give you the durability and the length of time, it's going to be a really good usable coating. Seven, seven coats would be absolute best and it'll give you a full deep, like you can look into it type shine. Um, we, we, so also another one um, is that is the uh, the single packs um, heat resistant. Um, they are to a degree, um, but if you have a hot cup of tea, uh, especially on single packs, they might maybe mark because um, they uh, single single packs generally they are um, they're only air drying paints, so they will slightly mark it. But just put something down. And they're not fully, you know, heat resistant. But if you want a bulletproof heat resistant paint, I'd probably go the polyurethane two pack system. Yeah. You can wipe that with solvent cleaners. They heat heat proof up to about 120, 130 degrees. Uh, but single packs, you just need to be a little bit careful. That's all. Yeah. Sorry, Laurie. That's all right. Interior satin system. So again, we're back to bare timber here with the rubbed effect varnish. So very not dissimilar to uh, the um, to the to the high gloss, except uh, it's the same thinner. So it's the brush thinner. Um, but however, if you look at the percentages of thinner that is added to it, there are there are a lot less. So the first step would only be twenty five percent. But then what you've got to be mindful of is the drying coat drying time per coat at eighteen degrees C. So it does, it does require that, uh, it, it is a longer system with the rubbed effect. Um, so you've, you've got 24 hours at 18 degrees C. That would only, that will only increase if it's colder or, or a bit chillier. So um, this is, you know, for an interior system, you would hope that in, if, you were, if you were varnishing the interior of a boat, you might be able to have a dehumidifier or a heater in there if it's in the winter uh, winter time with the cold to uh, to keep the heat up. But looking at that, you're sort of looking at a coat a day. Yeah. Um, the second coat, five to ten percent. Uh, step three, the third coat, naught to five percent. Step four could be the same as well. Thereafter, you could then be adding more coats. But again, it's um, it's just going to take that a little bit longer. Like a lot of like, like a lot of paints, um, epoxies and anything else like that, temperature has a bearing in in how they cure. Equally, how they flow. Um, so uh, you know, the warmer, the better, really. Um, however, here in the northern hemisphere, we don't always enjoy the 
the balmiest of climates. So uh, we, uh, you know, we make make the best of it, uh, and um, yeah. we can add a little bit of heat, uh, and with a bit of airflow, uh, you know, you will get uh, you will get a, a very very good result. Yeah. Um, and the rubbed effect varnish really is only for interior. You can build up with the high gloss. You can build up with the uh, with the, with the, uh, the high gloss varnish. Um, so your you know your initial your initial uh, uh, coats with the high gloss varnish. You could do that and then add the the rubbed effect over the top of it if you wish. Yeah. Um, but it is very much only for the interior. Wood finish gloss. Um, this one is sort of is designed specifically for teak because teak is a is a very resinous wood and at this particular time is almost is like gold dust. Uh, teak is, as you're probably aware, is now um, you're not allowed to import it into an awful lot of countries. Um, nothing is allowed to come out of Burma these days. Uh, what teak there is, um, you know, it, they're, they're clamping down. Uh, on deforestation and rightly so, uh, but they're, they're, a lot of the fresh teak that is coming in, there's lots of questions being asked about it. So the wood finish gloss, it is a high gloss finish like, it's it, high gloss, um, but it is it is aimed specifically at the teak. Um, excellent flow um, and, and a very, very long lasting gloss. So uh, it's, uh, you know, very, very durable and, and super shiny. The benefit of this one is sanding uh, so you don't need to sand uh, for the first 72 hours, which means that you can add more coats uh, within that. It's got, it's, yeah, it's very open, chemically open um, for a long while. So if you've got a big area to do, choose this product, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, as I said, suited for oily woods, new and existing systems. So again, uh, this you can put this over an existing system provided uh, the, um, the preparation. Is, uh, is done correctly by, uh, you know, uh, uh, abrasion. Um, and this will go over either uh, existing single or two pack varnishes, just, just as others would. Wood finish mat. Um, so this is a, a, a matte finish. Uh, and now what's the difference between satin and a mat? Well, you tell me, my version of matte might be your version of satin, but this is actually <laughs> going down that doesn't, satin to me would be, there is a slight sheen to it. Um, so you can see, if you looked at it from an angle, you could see uh, a little bit of reflection, but matte, there's nothing, it's, it's, it's completely dull. Um, but this can be used for exterior and interior, um, very much where you want it, where you want absolutely no glare whatsoever. Um, it, it flows beautifully and it still has a very, very good UV protection. Uh, uh, so hence it can be used externally as well. Um, the matte finish on a high gloss buildup. So again, this could go over the top of wood finish gloss or gloss varnish uh, if you wanted to go over the top of either of those two with the uh, with the wood finish matte and have a uh, a matte finish uh, over an existing system. If you can. I think I think the gloss levels on a matte. I think they're up to from naught to about thirty percent, and then satins are about forty to sixty ish. Yeah. And then high gloss is anywhere <laughs> eighty upwards. I think. Yeah. So you can see here a, a table. Um, the, the the image on the right was a a, a piece of. Uh, I'm not sure if that's oak or what that was uh, was prepared and um, and sanded back, and then you can see uh, that would be a full system. Uh, but you can see just the transformation uh, and the uh, and, and the way it's brought the grain out as well. It's um it's lovely. The one on the left looks like that was probably a bit of a teak or uh, iroko. And um, again, that's with a matte. That looks like a, a matte finish. Doesn't look too glossy. No. Rapid clear. Um, so this is a semi gloss, one component varnish. Uh, so we've got. We've got two types. You've got an amber clear. So um, if you can imagine that like a honey, uh, and then you've got a teak tinted. So if you wanted to, rather than using a stain, uh, you could use the teak tinted um, uh, rapid clear uh, to change the color of the timber um, uh, all in one, rather than having to put a stain on and then put a varnish over the top of it. Um, 
again, can be used interior and exterior over, over in existing systems. So if you had a high gloss or, uh, and you wanted, to, um, you wanted to change it to a semi-gloss to dull it down just that little bit more, you could. Uh, and uh, it's re-varnishable after five hours. So um, it's, uh, it's quite quick. Quite yeah. So the rapid clear coat, as you can see, um, uh, you would want to be doing five or six coats. Uh, if you needed to thin, it very much depends upon what the timber's like, um, also what your conditions are like. But if you do want to thin it out a little bit and wanted to, you were going on to virgin timber and you wanted to wick in, then uh, you would need a great deal of um, a great deal of thinners. But again, it's still Epiphane's brush thinner. You can spray these products if you wanted, and you had the, the wherewithal to do it. Um, but uh, really, the way that it the way that it goes on with the brush is is absolutely lovely. So, um, so as you can see, for high gloss finish sand, and then with a uh, with two two twenty, and then you could top coat with a clear varnish or a gloss. So you could go over the top of that and really get an absolutely high gloss. Um, if you uh, if you so design. Just touching on the prep quickly to another question come in. Uh, what prep should I do before wood, uh, before applying first coat? So generally speaking with all single packs and some two packs, um, 180 to 240, obviously the coarser it is, the more varnish it might take. Obviously all the timbers are different. So anywhere between 180, or you, you could go down to 150 if you want, but just bear in mind you might be put, putting on a little bit more varnish to soak up um, the sanding scratches, obviously it's deep, deeper coarse, but nothing finer than 240, nothing probably coarser than 150, personally speaking. Sorry, Larry. All right, no problem. <clears throat> so we have the differences in the varnish with the Epiphanes range. So you have the high gloss. Um, so all the, all the high gloss is the clear varnish, wood finish gloss, PP varnish, wrap here is semi-gloss, PU varnish H is, is high gloss. The PU varnish, I might add, um, is an, uh, is a, is an, it's almost like an acrylic polyurethane, um, whereby it's a two-part and the acrylic polyurethane is, can be repaired. So you could actually buff it out if you had any scratches or dings. So if you can imagine a king plank, uh, on, a, on, on the bow of an absolutely stunning wooden boat and you wanted something really, really glossy and lovely. But you might be running an anchor chain or you might be running some, uh, some uh, thwarts or something across it. Uh, you could actually repair that PU uh, varnish uh, because yeah. you, could, you could go across it with a, with a mop and uh, a polishing machine and get any scratches and dings out. It, it's that tough. Uh, but it's an, uh, an, what we now call an acrylic polyurethane. So um, it remains soft enough that when you actually heat it up with a mop, it, it, um, it starts to flow again, provided again, you have enough coat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so for build up varnishes, as you can see, uh, the, the clear varnish is, is pretty good. Wood finish gloss is pretty good. PP varnish, as you can see, five stars, absolutely excellent. Is a, is a wonderful product, a one to one, two part just probably the best uh, grain filler out there. Rapid Clear Semi Gloss is also very good and the PU varnish is a build up. Um, it's, it's okay, it's not bad. Drying time, as you can see, clear varnish 24 hours, wood finish gloss 24 hours, PU varnish 24 hours, but the PP as a build up coat again, three hours, Rapid Clear five hours. UV protection, they're all excellent bar the PP varnish because it's designed as a build-up. <clears throat> it does have UV protection, of course it does, but it's designed as a build-up. So uh, with, with having uh, one of the other products over the top. Um, so uh, so the UV protection on all of them bar the PP is absolutely top notch. One component, clear varnish, wood finish gloss and rapid clear. The other two PP and PU varnish are what we call two part. Hardness, um, as you can see, the clear varnish and the wood finish and the rapid clear, or the single pack, the one component, they're not as hard wearing as the, the two packs. And again, that's just coming back to the fact that you've got a chemical hardener, which is accelerating the cure. So um, 
hopefully that's that sort of fairly fairly clear so generally exterior high, high, high movement areas would be two pack um uh, down below uh and other areas as well single pack epiphanes do have um mahogany and teak stains uh so you can add this to timber uh if you wanted to change the appearance um it will it will it basically beef up dull looking um dull looking uh timbers and, and then they can all just be poured in and added to all the varnishes. So rather than having a uh, like the, the clear, which is not quite clear, but is a is a if you could imagine a very very uh, a very very almost clear honey. If you wanted to add a mahogany or a teak stain to it, you can. Uh, and all mm -hmm. you do is just just colour it, just give it a, a bit more a bit more depth, a bit a bit more colour. Yeah. yeah. Application by brush. Now, what I might do, actually, I might ask Ben here, my colleague, Ben, um, who yep. and I'll just give you a bit of background about Ben. Ben started um, spraying boats and painting boats um, out with Fox's Marina in, in up in Ipswich and has sprayed all sorts of boats from oysters to sun seekers to you name it. He sprayed it. So Ben, from an application point of view, <clears throat> um, can talk me into the weeds. Um, so uh, <laughs> what I do is. I'd rather perhaps if Ben could give a, a little bit more uh, insight onto the application from an, an applicator's point of view, which I think is, is yeah, no worries, not a problem at all. So yeah, so by brush, everyone's tempted to dip the dip the paintbrush into the varnish, the can, and whack on as thick as they can. Just build it up gradually, build it up slowly, degrease the brush before, degrease the surface before, use the correct thinners appropriate. You no, know? so single pack brush thinner or two pack slow reducer these all these products are here to help you you guys apply the, in the easiest of time give you the best of uh, best finish out there um it don't don't mix as i say don't mix brands uh, other brands in the system so keep to one system at least you know if it does go wrong anywhere you say write this tin that tin or was it that tin or just keep it one-to-one -one system good temperatures obviously you don't want the sun baking on it too much directly because it will just dry the your wet edge time out quite a lot so and work just work sensibly to an area you can achieve in that application time don't don't go think you're going to get my whole boat done in a day just take your time don't rush it and you'll always get good results and if you know these the, all these paints they are quite harmful for you in some cases good ventilation and a mask and eye protection and and, and gloves um just protect yourself really um for application on varnishes and paints colored or clear varnishes i pretend i personally like a, a bristle brush um I don't, I'm not really a fan of the foam brushes um, and I'm not really a fan of rollering on varnishes all by brush, a good quality Anza brush or a Harris, um, whatever your preference is really. Um, yeah, uh, and obviously yeah, cold paint is thicker. Before you, a little tip, before you use your paint, your single pack paints, if you've got it in your garage for two weeks before you're gonna use it, get it off there the week, uh, the night before, Put it indoors keep it in the warm put it on the radiator for an hour just so it lowers the viscosity of the paint so it becomes thinner it's going to be a lot easier for you guys to apply your single pack paint um yes. be mindful as well ben if i can just interject that um yeah. uh the, the the substrate the substrate being the timber or the actual boat uh yeah if they can be that very very similar temperatures that certainly helps it's a lot uh, so better. That the, so that the varnish or the paint is the same or as close to the same temperature as yeah. the substrate or the boat glossy gloss uh, gloss paint gloss varnishes if the um if the substrate is really really cold and you've kept the varnish or the paint quite warm you will get a bit of a shock and you will lose um a degree of gloss yeah so, it's like uh, flow at all no no, no. Um, and that's easy for us to say isn't it because depending upon where the where the boat is sitting if it's out in your out in your in your in your garden 
uh, or uh, it's in a shed, um, you don't always have the luxury of, uh, of, of having mm. temperature control. Um, but it's just these little things to sort of keep in mind. If they can be uh, roughly around about as close to temperature as possible yeah. as one another, that will certainly help. But obviously anything that's cold, um, it doesn't flow so well. It yeah, doesn't yeah. flow so well. Definitely. There's some further examples here. There you see, there's a car uh, that was yeah. uh, that was varnished a beautiful wooden car. I think this was in Holland, I believe, uh, and went to a motor show uh, because it was a it was a wooden chassis. Um, but as I say, um, and, and what you tend to find is a lot of people do realise that marine varnishes, because of the harsh marine environment, they um, you know they, their longevity uh, and their gloss levels are considerably higher than um, than some than, than other industries so it does become quite popular so it, if you see uh you know you if you were lucky enough to have a, a car with a wooden chassis and you've used epiphanes on your boat and you like the finish you know by all means use it uh use it on on, uh, on anything that you can front doors uh, uh windows everything else like that is wonderful as you can see yeah. some other examples beautiful look at that wooden barge um dutch barge traditional just stunning uh, all, done with, uh, all done with that paint. Yeah. I mean, the gloss on that is just something else, and it's flat as well. Um, beautiful, beautiful shine. Yeah. So, the, yeah, that that probably have some seven to nine coats on it. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to I mean, these. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can see the reflection of the clouds uh, in that, which is just shows you the depth of image. As equally, you can see the grain as well. So, um, it just just shows you what sort of results. Uh, can be achieved. Uh, yeah. So the professional varnish application. So the, these are the two packs, and now two packs generally are are for professionals. Um, of course, you as as uh, as at home as DIYs, and please, I don't mean that in a derogatory sense. Of course, you can get on with them. You will get absolutely superb results with it. But just be mindful that. Some people are a little bit worried about two packs because of mix ratio and the like, but um, you can get some absolutely wonderful finishes. Uh, but this is where you'll probably see most in boatyards uh, will be will be a two pack system because they're far more familiar with them, and these you don't see so readily available in the chandlers or uh, the um, uh, sort of uh, retail uh, outlets uh, because people mm -hmm. generally back off. The PP varnish, as I alluded to earlier, probably the best. Uh, it's not hasn't got the highest UV, but is probably the very best build-up varnish. So if you were going back to bare timber, and you were going to go, um, uh, as I let said to you earlier, you can put single pack over two pack. So you could do the uh, use the PP. It's a one to one mix, and uh, it wicks in absolutely beautifully into the timber and just the best build-up coat yeah. very very strong uh remains flexible um it's, it's quite a, it's quite a low viscosity it's quite, yeah. it's quite a thin product so it does wick in to timber quite well but yeah. it yeah it's, it's it's a very quick system and a when hard you, when system. you shake it, it, it it's almost like water um uh it, you know the, the comp b which is the hardener is 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 not thick and runny like a lot yeah. of others are um, but it's it's a it's a wonderful wonderful product, and then of course you can put single pack over the top of that. Yeah. So the PU clear gloss satin. This was the one that I was saying to earlier that could be repaired. It's a it's a polyurethane. So, and a polyurethane cures purely by the uh, it has a um, uh, has a, a cure a curing agent, and what it does is it actually grabs moisture from the air. Um, it's like a a moisture scavenger. So it. Um, it grabs and so on a, on a very very humid day where there's there's a lot of moisture um you'll find that it it cures just that little bit quicker um mm -hmm. very very tough very very tough um and uh really to the point where you can repair it as i said if you get any chips or things this stuff is absolutely wonderful can be used interior and exterior has excellent yep. uv um and um and it says only for non-working plywood I, I don't you can use that on on any timber you like yeah. speed coat what speed coat is is a two component spray only professional yacht varnish it, uh, so there is a clear 
So um, if you if you're familiar with things like um, Joke Megagloss AC or Brit or, or Craft 2000, uh, Alex Seal X series, any of those um, PU uh, acrylic polyurethane repairable top coats, Epiphanes have the PU speed coat, which is exactly the same. Uh, sprays beautifully, lays as flat as anything uh, in the right hands. I mean, let's say it's the, the master is the guy that's painting or spraying it and get it get it absolutely right, but superb mm -hmm. protection, um, uh, exterior or interior, very, very tough. And that also can be flat and polished in the event that you had a, a run or you had some dust inclusions, um, then this can be repaired as well. Yeah. Um, as you can see, 95% gloss. Uh, there is a satin version, which uh, has been reduced. It's basically had a load of matting agent put in it, which reduces it to sort of 18 to 20% gloss. Um, but the satin does have the UV filter in it as well. So the same level of UV protection as the gloss uh, and can also be used outside. So if you had an outside area that you wanted to be a little bit sort of flat or matte, then the, the speed go, but it is very much designed to be sprayed on, not yes, uh, yes. rolled yeah. or brushed. I've, I've, tr I've tried to roll it and brush it. It just doesn't like it. It's really for spray only. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the PU speed coat spray thinner is for the, as it says, it's PU spray coat. PU spray thinner is the fastest thinner. So that would be used if you were going to spray was going to be used on anything polyurethane. So that would be the, uh, the PU gloss. PU brush thinner, again, using with a PU, with a polyurethane, uh, that's for brush painting. So the, the brush thinner is uh, slower than the spray thinner. Sorry, do you want to yeah. touch on that, Ben? Yeah, so I've had, and some of my customers have really good results with just using the slow reducer on large or smaller uh, applications. So where the brush thinner still does the job, but if you've got a really long piece of timber or really long cabin side, which you're varnishing or painting with a colour, the slow reducer just slows down that um, evaporation, keeps the paint flowing and gives you a longer wet edge time. So if you're a bit unsure with a brush and a roller or it's the first time, go the slow. It will just help your application um, a, 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 long a long way. Um, yeah. I've just seen a picture. How do you avoid getting dust in your finish? What a great question. Um, <laughs> in a, it's very difficult. In, in a word, it's um, it's not uh, it's not not easy. Um, ordinarily, you build a tent uh, or some form of uh, of cover over the um, over the the, the 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 piece that you're uh, that you're varnishing. It's inevitable that unless it was yeah. absolutely clinical you were in a very very expensive temperature controlled spray booth um that you're going to eradicate the chance of any dust um yeah. and it depends upon how finickety you are on the on, on the finish um but bear in mind that the pu gloss the two pack pu gloss or the speed coat if you were to get if there was just absolutely nothing you could do about it where you couldn't um you know, you couldn't remove any dust or you couldn't guarantee there was going to be no dust. Bear that in mind with your choice of product. The PU gloss does give you that option that if there was some dust inclusions, you could yeah. actually mop that out with a um, with a a, 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 mop, a foam mop uh, and get that lovely gloss and get rid of those um, get rid of those that, that dust. It's a very good question, and unfortunately, yeah. there is. There is no hard and fast. Uh, you could do absolutely everything, and then your neighbour decides that yeah. you're sawing up some timber. Um, it happens in boat yards. Uh, you know, we've seen boats being sprayed with very, very expensive yacht paint, and then someone a bit further down the shed decides to spray WD-40 to put a propeller on a prop shaft, and then they get fish eyes everywhere. So um, it's uh, it's it's not easy. <laughs> just, just 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 do everything you can. Yeah. Clean down, wipe down. Yeah. Yeah. Not usual practice. Yeah. Degassing when PP varnish. What happens is that the PP, because it's a one-to-one -one and, and it starts curing fairly quickly. If it gets hot, if, if it does suddenly get very, very hot, 
then what you might see is little bubbles where it's actually it's curing and it's semi exotherming whereby it's um, it's cooking um, only due to the high temperatures, not the fact that you've done a you've done an outer ratio mix. It's just ambient temperature. So um, just be mindful what the temperature is, as we said earlier on, you know, not in direct sunlight, if you can possibly help it. And if mm. and I know you're coming from so the US and, uh, and other places as well, if you were, mm. I would say you were in California and it was, uh, you know, it was going to be up to sort of 80 degrees, um, then perhaps not a good idea to consider varnishing uh, in those sort of temperatures. Um, exactly. Yeah, go go down to the beach, get the uh, get the surfboard out, and enjoy life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, just be mindful of that. Speed coat slower. Um, you can again if you decided that you wanted to uh, apply speed coat uh, by spray, you can slow it down by uh, blending the speed coat thinner and the brush thinner. So what it does, it's just a, it's just an amalgam of, of the two thinners. One with, which has got a, a fast evaporation for spraying, and the other one, which is the brush, which has got a slower. The two combined will actually reduce the, uh, the cure, well, just the cure time, give you that longer wet edge again. Um, and also to remember, slower thinners will increase the possibility of runs because you're lengthening the wet edge and by the time that it means that you don't get a drag. If you, if, if you're, if you're applying by brush and then it starts to sag and starts to grab across the surface, uh, you've lost your wet edge. Then you might be able to sort of give a couple of tips yeah, because yeah, because the the slower evaporation of the thinners, so the, the the brush, the standard two pack brush thinner, it is a medium to fast thinner. So like I say, good for little areas and you can do big areas, but you just lose your wet edge time. But the slower one, it's great for the flow. But you need to just bear in mind if you put it on a bit thicker, and it's taking that a little bit longer to evaporate out because it's a slower evaporating thinner. You might get some runs, curtains. So just just go careful. Don't put it on too thick. Just build it up gradually. Um, and yeah, there's nothing wrong with the slow. You just just need to take your time and just be careful. That's all it is. Again beautiful results i mean look at that look at the marquetry in the middle of that, that table with that star beautiful and you can see there you can actually even see sorry you can, you can actually see um the make mm. of the uh of the tractor there in the oh, reflection yeah. <laughs> um that's uh that's what you call a gloss yeah i think that was with the two pack speed coat yeah yeah i think beautiful absolutely beautiful sorry Maintenance, um, the, all the products can be bought anywhere around the world. So wherever you are, there will always be uh, an Epiphanes, uh, an Epiphanes distributor. Uh, and they're, they're throughout the US, uh, in Australia, um, uh, all, around, all around Europe. Um, yeah, so it, it, it is widely available. So for those of you fortunate enough to be uh, doing up boats, perhaps with a view to, to go off sailing around the world, and why wouldn't you? Um, and you wanted to maintain the boat with the same products, um, it's always good to carry some with you on the boat, but don't be alarmed that you will be able to buy it elsewhere around the world if you, if you decide to go on travel. Yeah. yeah. You know, they've got a very, very good um, distributor network. The support, we, well, uh, all, all um, technical data sheets, TDSs and material safety data sheets are available at the on the Epiphanes website or you can download them from our website which is simply marineindustrial.co.uk. There is a very good app that Epiphanes... It's very, very good. I use it all the time. Yeah, so you can, uh, you can download the app uh, and um, keep that on your phone. Um, any jobs that you do, please, uh, Epiphanes love any photos. As you can see, all those photos that we've shown you this evening have all come from very, very happy customers. And if you've got any uh, on any of the projects that you're doing and you get some really, really stunning results and you're particularly happy, show them to us. You know, show off, show, tell us how good, how good you are and how well you've done. And, um, you know, let's have a look at them and share them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And share them to everybody. Um, 
so that's that comes to the end now questions and answers please um uh ben and i are here we're, we're as we say we're here all night so um <laughs> whatever you may like my like to uh the whip but if and if i haven't answered anything I, I, I apologize now is the time if uh, i can uh, if either myself or ben can answer any questions please fire away yeah just, we've, just had, the... we've had one come in guys with um if my varnish is looking tatty how far should i strip back it depends if, it, if it's all flaking off if the varnish has passed its sell by date heat gun it off strip it off clean it down i wouldn't it just depends how the state of how far it's gone. You know, if it's looking tatty, nine times out of ten, it's probably past its shelf life. A full recoat, seven, seven coats, like in, in the beginning of the first section on the single packs, <clears throat> then you're going to get four to six years, maybe longer, depending on the amount of coats. Um, but yeah, he's done it off. Start I suspect again. that's probably come from someone that has, has purchased, a, purchased a boat from a, a, another owner be that through brokerage or what have you and they don't yeah. know you know they don't know how long that varnish or that paint has been on uh and it, it, it's, it's a typical question how long um uh sh should it uh, and, it, and then what it'll do the certain areas might start going black where there's been a bit of moisture well then you can you can scratch back or remove the uh, remove the varnish back to where it's no longer going black and then you can start doing build-up coats. But generally, if it if it started to go, it's looking a bit flat. It's not looking too clever. Um, then yeah. when you want the full protection and the full longevity again. It might be a bit painful at first to think about it, but it might be the better option just to go back to bare timber and, and build up again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was certainly us after two years of uh, COVID baking in the sunshine and, no, and no, <laughs> nobody actually able to do any work on it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly yeah. that, yeah. yeah. And then, then I see that there's a question come up. How important is it to follow the overcoating windows? Pretty important, really. Um, the overcoating windows are there <clears throat> um, for a reason. Um, the only, if you don't follow the overcoating windows, all it might be is that you would get, if it was with a, a two-pack, um you might get what we call solvent entrapment so if you haven't allowed that thinner to actually evaporate the thinner is there to help flow allow the product to flow if you go on too quickly with another coat it might appear that it's it's starting to cure on the surface but underneath it's still soft and so what tends to happen is you get little bubbles uh, and that's purely a solvent entrapment and it does just doesn't look very pretty so the, the overcoating window is is there for a reason, and then if you follow it, you'll get the you'll get the full result. Yeah, and with the single pack overcoating window, you know, like a, similar to the the two part, um, if you overcoat single pack too quick, that because it's only air drying paint, the first layer might not have dried so quickly, and you keep loading it up with loads more coats, and then it will just stay soft and cause problems it, it will dry eventually but it will take a long time to, to through dry so yeah overcoat times are there for a reason um just try try and stick to them really they're you know they're, they're pretty good <laughs> and long run you'll get a really good job yeah yeah okay I mean, um what do you recommend for areas which have foot traffic two pack every day <laughs> yeah two, yeah. two, two pack yeah, if, if it's a high traffic area like Laurie said in the beginning, you know, handrails, foot, foot walking, ways. yeah, go like two pack. You, yeah. you, you, it's going to last. If you do, if if it, if you do a really good two pack clear varnish system, and you get you hit the correct dry film thicknesses on each coat, the dry the, the wet film, a uh, dry film, sorry, you can expect to not redo it for another ten to twelve years, you know, so. Two pack high traffic areas, foot foot walkings, two packs if you can. Another one should you should you cover varnish over winter to protect it? <clears throat> um, you can. The only yeah. problem the only problem that you have is that you, if moisture gets between whatever it is you're coating, uh, you're covering it with, and then the moisture sits trapped onto yeah. the varnish, and it's got no means of evaporating over the winter because we still do have some 
sort of you know mild days in the winter time what will happen is you'll just have the moisture will gradually wick into the into the into the varnish and um you'll just have a black spot really it'll just look <laughs> it'll just look untidy so yes you can um but you would uh, you cover it by all means but make sure that you have an airflow uh to to allow any moisture to evaporate yeah, lowest temperature right. to well, I, would, I was just going to say just in addition to that one whilst not covering it over is there a way to protect varnish better over winter or is it strong enough to stand at standard ranges in temperature and all that sort of thing yeah it will yeah yeah oh it, it'll withstand i mean it's elastic you know it, it has a it has a degree of elasticity and um because the don't forget the timber itself is still is still breathing you know it, it still moves so um so that degree of elasticity that's that's in there um allows that wood to move a little bit um but uh yeah i i think um it, it, it will it will withstand you know the ravages of time and temperature um but I, i'm i'm always cautious of you know, I have heard people. They said, "Oh, we're going to mask in tape uh, and put a cover down over the over king yeah. plate around the sides." And I just say, well, "Don't don't do that because the it moisture needs to breathe." Yeah, it, it needs to breathe. Yeah, yeah it does. Um, lowest temperature you would recommend to apply varnish? What a good question. Um, Twelve degrees, yeah. ideally. Not no, nothing nothing below. I think the data sheet on the single pack. I think it says minimum of eight degrees, maximum of 30. I'd always probably stay on the edge of caution and probably go minimum of 12. Um, humidity wise, 55, 60% humidity, yeah. uh, if you can measure that. Um, but if it's soggy and wet outside, just, just pick a good calm day, probably once the dew is gone between half 10 and 11 o'clock. Um, but then probably no later than two, three o'clock if you're outside. And the other when, thing you need to look out with 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 um yeah. with, a, with a very very humid day is you, you can get what's called micro condensation, which you can't see with the eye. But if you were to grab a, a, a tissue um, and you wiped it across, uh, you'll find that that um, that there will be a degree of dampness on it. And all it's done is it's uh, a very very thin, very very thin film of condensation that's built up on the substrate. Um, and of course, if you don't see that, then you apply varnish straight over the top of that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, that, that ties in nicely. with What would you do if it rains on a recently applied <laughs> varnish? <laughs> oh. Swear profusely, um, yeah. <laughs> but not, it, not in front of the wife. Um, it really, de it really depends. You know, you, you could think, oh, um, I'm going to give up now. You could, you could go and wash it all off with some white spirit or something. Um, you just need to be careful. I'd probably give it a couple of days to dry. Stop, obviously, stop what you're doing. Give it a couple of days to dry. Sand it with some 220, 240 grit sandpaper. Let that layer dry for a couple of days and then start again um, with another full coat. Because if you just keep going, you might trap that moisture in between the layers. And it could cause you further problems down the line. Um, it's Not a tricky one. <laughs> yeah. Can you add non-slip to foot traffic area? Because yes, you can. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, Epiphanes do some really good. Um, it's a 20 gram pot, um, non-skid beads, and you can add 20 grams, 20 grams into one 750 mil of paint. Um, that gives you really good texture, really good grip. Um, yes, yeah, so that can go into any any of their coatings, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Can you varnish over epoxy? Absolutely, yes, you can. And actually, we would encourage because epoxies mm. are not inherently UV stable. So if anyone were to, um, if you've seen a boat that's been sheathed, uh, where and there's some wooden boats in it, to the, to the traditionalists, they feel that sheathing perhaps is, uh, is is almost on the verge of heresy. You know, it's uh, you shouldn't do it. But um, <laughs> um, it's a great way of keeping the moisture out of the timber. But you need, uh, if you were to just leave epoxy. Uh, open to the element, it you wouldn't it wouldn't lose its integrity. What it what it would happen was it would just go milky, um, and it would just wouldn't look particularly clever. So we do things like West System. Um, West System had some certain hardeners which uh, uh, have a, a degree of UV stability in them. But we would always recommend if someone has put 
epoxy. And epoxy can be used as an excellent fill wrap coat. Um, you know, I've seen uh, I've seen a, 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 a cockpit table on a on a very very large super yacht that was coated with three coats of um, of West System 105 205, and then sprayed with a an acrylic polyurethane top coat, and just wonderful, just lovely. So, uh, in answer, yes, you can, and actually, you should. Uh, if if somebody is going to roll some epoxy as a uh, to, to to protect a bit of timber, always always put a, uh, a varnish over the top of it because the varnish has UV yeah. inhibitors and will protect the epoxy. And the epoxy is a lovely stable uh, substrate on which to apply varnish. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think that I think that's it for questions, guys. It just leaves me to say a huge thank you. It's been an education, more than education, and not only because of all the knowledge you guys have, but it's all the personal input you put in, all that sort of side of things. There's personal knowledge of things that you've done differently in some ways and things like that, which has been hugely important. And, and uh, a huge thank you from me uh, and all at Haven Auctions for your time this evening. It's been, it's been, it's been an education, shall we say.